The air was moist, soft clouds hanging around me as I made my way upwards. Lungshan was an ethereal place, quite possibly heaven on earth if I was being honest. In all my years of hiking and traveling over the globe, I had come across many wonders that Mother Nature had kept hidden beneath her veil, away from the polluting gaze of mankind. I, being favored by her, was able to witness these with my own two eyes, and to say that it was a blessing would be an understatement. I had arrived in Beijing a few days ago, the many cultures of the Chinese people, the invigorating sense of food on the streets, the old palaces, it was all very overwhelming, in a good way. I was there with my associate Nicole, a bright young woman with the mannerisms of a mother and a boss simultaneously. She was my travel partner, and although not as adventurous as I, she would trudge along wherever I wanted to go, even if it was the last corner of the earth. There was moss on the rocks that I stepped on, making the climb a bit slippery. But it was all right. Nothing my Merrill Moabs couldn't endure. They had been on my feet for as long as I could remember, and not once had they betrayed me. They made every claim easier and softer for my feet, and I adored them. I wiped the sweat off my brow and adjusted my backpack on my shoulders with a little shrug. It had gotten very humid lately, and being from Nevada, I wasn't a big fan of that. I looked up the weather forecast on my phone, the previous nights as I always did, and rain was not expected in the upcoming week at all. So it came as a surprise when clouds started covering the peak I was tracking on. It was then that something in the back pocket of my shorts buzzed, and I fished from my phone amongst empty wrappers and a few loose yuan. I pulled it out and held it up to my ear. It was Nicole. Hello, Nicole. I said breathlessly into the phone. Ronald Wymore. She began, and since she had used my full government name, I knew I was in trouble. I've called you about 14 times now. Why the hell were you not picking up? I could imagine her leaning against a surface with a frown on her face as she questioned me. I had to stifle my laughter. Probably an issue with the signals. My phone isn't the best one, you know. I rolled my eyes even though I knew she could not see them. Whatever, Ron. Just wanted to let you know that I have your current location. You better be back soon. We have the photographs to sort and articles to write. And before I could speak another word, she hung up. Typical Nicole. Now Nicolette Kozlov was not always such a party pooper. Yes, she had her moments and would smile about twice a year, but she was a good person, even though she didn't show it much. I sighed as I put my phone away and looked in front of me. There was nothing but towering mountain peaks, clouds scattered about everywhere. Green vegetation sprouted from under rocks and earth, weaving its way up in intricate twines and bushes. I felt my breath hitch for a moment and close my eyes. When I opened them again, I lifted the camera around my neck with shaking hands and brought it up to my right eye. What I saw that day, or countless other times when I'd be traveling and hit by the beauty of Mother Nature, could never be compared to what my camera captured. It was hauntingly beautiful. And maybe these lifeless things envied humans, I thought after taking several pictures. I thought it would be nice to take a break since I'd been walking for over an hour and had not had the chance to sit down. I looked behind me. A few meters away was a huge pile of rocks eroded to look almost like a hammock. It looked like the perfect place to rest. I smiled as I made my way over, stumbling slightly as I reached the rocks, put my backpack down gently opened it up, and reach for the bottle of water inside. After quenching my thirst, I decided to rest against the hammock-shaped rock. With a sigh, I sat down amongst the stones, making myself comfortable, and was funny how humans could find comfort in both mattresses and rocks. Given the circumstances that we're currently in, I didn't mind the rock hammock one bit. I looked up at the sky to admire the view once more. When my eyebrows furrowed, dark, angry clouds had covered every inch of the sky, which had been previously very blue just moments ago, and small flashes of distant lightning could be seen. The wind had picked up its speed, and I could now feel it passing through my clothes, playing with my hair as it went by with a frown. I lifted myself up to get a closer look. When the clouds rumbled, thundering so loud that I flinched, causing the rocks that I was on to tumble and I fell. A loud yell left my lips as I was enveloped in darkness, my arms flailing as I tried to hold on to something anything at all, but I just kept falling for what seemed like hours, until my back hit the ground and I let out a paint groan at the impact. My head spun, 
and my eyes were blurry as they adjusted. It was a hard fall. Maybe not that hard, since I had somehow survived it. My body ached all over that I felt my stomach pitch the thought I might be trapped. I shook my head. This was no time to be thinking about things like that. When my eyes fully adjusted, a gasp left my lips involuntarily. When one falls amongst a cluster of miniature boulders, all one initially cares about is being alive and being trapped in an underground cave. Only if you're alive. I had expected it to be very dark and dusty, but what my eyes saw was quite the contrary. Burning beacons were lined against the eroded, firm walls that surrounded me, illuminating the space. My eyes roamed around the circle. The diameter could not have been more than six meters that surrounded me. The circle seemed perfect, not something you would expect to find underground. I rose to my feet, wincing. My knees were bruised and my left foot was twisted at an odd angle. I was pretty sure it was broken. I lifted an aching arm and fished from my phone in my back pocket or its remnants anyways. But to my surprise and great relief, it was there in one piece, only a single large crack running down the screen. I could almost cry how happy I was. I turned my phone on. There was of course no service available, and it was four in the afternoon. Just great. I held on to it just in case I needed a flashlight or something else, and it was kind of reassuring to hold my phone. Like I was holding my mother's hand in a room full of strangers, my backpack being no longer with me my shoulders felt empty and I rolled them to get rid of the feeling. I knew I had to be brave. The beacons irradiated the room, covering it in soft yellow light, and had it been under different circumstances I would have appreciated the soft glow. The circle I stood in led to a narrow, dimly lit path, and since standing there would not do me any good, I decided to go and check it out in hope of finding an exit. I limped towards the path with a small groan, moving and dragging my feet. It hurt a lot more than I had originally thought it might. The walls of the path were very straight, peculiar, considering the place seemed empty and obviously devoid of any signs of life. I balanced myself on the walls of the narrow passageway. Sweat was poured down my neck. The walls were rough, even against my calloused hands, and they pricked my skin, causing it to sting. But as much as I was pushing forwards, my feet refused to budge after a while. Sighing, I sat down against the walls, the narrow confines barely wide enough to accommodate me. I tugged off my plaid shirt and tore it in half. One half, I decided to tie around my foot, undoing the laces of my boots. I grimaced at my bloody white socks. Looking away before the sight made me sick as quickly as I could. I wrapped the cloth around my foot, not fighting the tears that left my eye because of the pain. The pain was unlike any other I'd experienced before. A burning feeling as if I was walking on hot coals and flames were devouring me, licking every inch of my foot. With a sigh of relief, I fastened the cloth and then looked at the remaining piece. I decided to tear it into two and tie the pieces around my bleeding knees. After fastening them, I decided to search my pockets for anything else that might come in handy. My hands looked around and managed to procure the following. To keep myself focused, I made a mental note. Hazelnut-flavored granola bars, a switchblade, empty wrappers of different candies, some hand sanitizer, and a black obsidian-like rock that I had found at the beginning of my trek. I stuffed the things into my front pockets and got up. The pain had subsided, if only a little bit, and I was feeling much better knowing I had a few things on hand. Now left only in my vest was a pair of shorts. I trudged forward, since that was the only way to go. The narrow path seemed endless. As I walked and walked, occasionally turning on my phone to look at the time, it was 6 p.m. already, and still no service. Just when I was about to sit down and rest again, I saw a glimmer of light ahead. So I walked a bit faster, hoping to reach some sort of exit. Unfortunately, it was nothing of the kind. No, it was a rectangular room with the characters of an unfamiliar language engraved all over the walls, and in front of me were three different tunnels leading to God knows where. I was astonished by the engravings, and I traced their contours with my fingertips. The room was better lit than the rest, and it seemed as if the characters were announcements of some kind, maybe an indication. They were a bit smudged, having been there for who knows how long and quite eroded. It was very clear that the one who had written them was in a hurry, as the smooth flow of the character turned into a rushed short current, as if the person could not have stayed much longer. 
the message that the characters had wanted to convey must have been very important, and as such, I wanted to know what it meant. Unfortunately, I was not acquainted with the language. I had done my best to learn Mandarin Chinese within the time allotted before I came here. A few greetings, tourist talk, how to say yes and know how to ask for the bathroom or how much something cost, things like that. So this was a language that was far beyond my understanding. However, I couldn't shake one thought out of my mind, that these words were a warning. Although I had not understood the text, a deep unsettled feeling pooled at the pit of my stomach, and the breakfast I'd eaten that morning threatened to make a reappearance should I venture on? Or should I just stay here? Should I wait for someone to find me? These questions plagued my mind, and I shook my head. As much as thinking things through was important, I didn't have much time my choices were limited. All I knew was that there were three paths in front of me, and I had to choose one. It was frightening, yes, but also thrilling. The thought of uncovering something great, something that mankind had never seen or should never see, was what consumed me at the moment. So I brought up my switchblade and turned towards the walls, in a corner that was left empty. I wrote down my initials, my age, the date, and a little message warning people of what was ahead. Even though I did not know what it was, I could feel it was dangerous, feeling like the main character of some historic thriller movie. I turned towards the paths perversely amused at the strangeness of the situation. I found myself in. None of the tunnels looked inviting. They all looked as if something deadly inside was waiting for me to step in, to tear me limb from limb. Despite that feeling, I had not encountered any living creature as of yet. There were no large insects or sleeping dragons or ancient beings, not even the sign of basic plant life. The whole place was void of any living thing. Except, of course, for me. But who could know how long that would be true for? I closed my eyes and took a deep breath, pointing my finger straight ahead. I slowly spun in a circle on the spot where I stood. I spun a few times until I stopped, my breath hitched. My finger was pointing to the path on the right side. And so that was where I would go. Was I making the best decision? Quite possibly not? What were the odds? I did not know what lay ahead, if I was to enter any of those caves. So one choice was as good as another. I trudged in the direction of the cave, gulping. My throat had gone dry. It had been more than two hours since I had last had water. Not thinking much about that, since it would only make me more thirsty. I walked forward once again. This tunnel, unlike the previous one, had no source of light inside. So I switched my phone on, thanked myself for charging it fully the day prior. But as soon as I turned on the flashlight on my phone, everything around me gloamed in an exploding array of colors. It was almost blinding, so I closed my eyes for a bit, opening them when I heard no sound and deemed it safe enough. There were one thousands of tiny crystals embedded in the walls above and the ground below me. Small pieces of jade, ruby, emerald, sapphire, and other stones that I was unable to recognize. It was beautiful how they gleamed, and I began to wonder what this place really was. I had forgotten all about the ache in my foot as I gaped at the gems, progressing ahead with fast-paced steps. It seemed as if I was in a trance, because I do not remember how far I had walked. As a matter of fact, all I remember was the large gasp that had left my mouth when I reached the end of the tunnel. The sound of rushing water could be heard very clearly as I neared the end, and that is when I snapped out of the trance I was previously in. My throat begged for water, and so my footsteps sped up on their own, and I could see lights once more. My phone's battery was at a very low percentage, and when I checked the time before tucking it away, it was 10 p.m. The large place that I now entered was well lit with beacons and gems all over. It contained a large waterfall in the center, my mind overwhelmed by thirst. I rushed forwards dipping my face in the large pool at the bottom of the currents, and it was so refreshing that water... It was probably the sweetest thing that I had ever tasted. I do not remember how long I had drank for just that it felt heavenly. I unwrapped the two granola bars and stuffed my face with them. Although I wasn't partial to the flavor, Nicole had insisted I take them along in case I felt hungry. That moment. I could have kissed her for that. Just as I finished chewing on them. I turned around looking at the waterfall, and that was when my eye caught something that glinted brighter than all the gems in the place. It was right behind the waterfall, and only a couple of rocks away from where I stood. 
and after having satiated myself, there was this new energy in me, and I wanted to know what it was ignoring the fact that my foot was quite literally broken. I climbed up the rocks, the jets of water soaking through my chest. When I finally managed the climb, I found myself confronted by the emblem of a feline embedded in the rocks. It was definitely made of gold or something that was even more precious. It had diamonds for eyes and a ruby for a nose. I reached out placing my palm against it. It felt cool and at the same time like I was touching something sacred and that it was something powerful. But nothing happened. Not until I removed my hand. The rocks beneath me started shaking once again and I held onto the wall of rocks behind me until that started disappearing as well. I had nothing to hold on to. I just crouched down in order to not get killed. It went on like that for a while, before it stopped all of a sudden. With bated breath, I raised my head. I stumbled backwards at the sight before me, for it was far too great than anything that I had ever seen. A large feline sat in place of what was a waterfall, its large eyes staring at me with bloodlust. I had disturbed this mighty creature from its sleep, and now I had to face the consequences. The ground rumbled, and I felt every fiber of my being shake. The switchblade in my pocket would not even tickle the mighty creature. It would probably not even feel it. Its eyes were black pits of endlessness. Its mouth curled up into a vicious grin, as if it could taste my terror. Its fur was glowing, much like the golden emblem that I had placed my hand upon and to say I was terrified would have been an understatement. I was not a particularly religious person, and believing in deities was something I had never even thought about. But what I saw in front of me it was otherworldly. I moved back slightly, gulping hoping it would not notice me, but, oh, it did. It hissed, shrinking into a much smaller shape. This made it almost even scarier than before, because now it sat almost seven feet, and its eyes never left mine. It looked like it wanted to play with me, like it wanted to toy with its food before eating it, swallowing it whole. The water that had traveled down my throat a while ago felt like it was never there, with how parched I now felt. The creature's tongue ran across its teeth, and there was only one thought in my mind, run, and so I ran. Its large paws made indentations on the ground as it chased after me. I could hear its erratic breathing, and almost feel its fur and the swipe of its tongue. It felt as if it could swipe me off my feet at any moment. It was just waiting for me to give up. Who knows what adrenaline pumped through me because I did not feel an ounce of pain in my broken foot. With nowhere else to go, I had to run back to where I came from. The creature growled behind me as I ran into the tunnel, not caring about the sweat pouring down my back in buckets. I increased my pace the best I could. As I was about to get out of the tunnel, dodging its paws as they came for me from left and right, it was breathing right down my neck when I took a swift turn, again back in the room with the wall full of warnings. Or so I assumed, I ran into the tunnel in the center not looking if it was coming after me, since I could not hear its paws against the tunnel ground. With each step, my heart thundered like it wanted to escape my ribcage and be free, like it wanted to be out of my body. And there it was, the sound of paws against the ground, and with how each muscle flexed with each leap under its skin. It had no difficulty catching up to me. My brain was going wild, thoughts racing through my head. Did giant supernatural cats have weaknesses? They did hate water. But that thing came from behind a waterfall, so no luck there. What about light? That room was well lit. But could it be a weakness? Since its eyes were so very dark. Maybe there was only one way to find out. This tunnel was wet, and that slowed both of us down. It seemed as if it was right behind that waterfall or led straight to a source of water. I didn't let that bother me. The only thought on my mind currently was how to survive and escape this mystical being that seemed to hell bent on eating me alive. The tunnel turned left and right quite often. Unlike the previous one, this one was dimly lit, and I could see what was ahead of me without the aid of my phone. I wouldn't have bothered to get it out even if it was pitch dark. Since that beast would devour me any second, I took a swift turn out of the tunnel and the beast roared, shaking the ground and the walls. I ran into the room with a waterfall once again, and there it was there in the tunnel. Even though its eyes were pitch black, I could see them glaring at me, as if it was the foulest thing on the surface of the earth. It let out low growls. It was not in the mood to play anymore. It was hungry, and I was the only thing that would sate its appetite. 
The growls that it let out caused the hair on my body to stand in fear. I could only walk back as it made its way towards me. I reached for the switchblade in my pockets as gently as I could. It hunched, hissing and baring its teeth at me. As if I did not already know I was about to be its dinner. I was just routed to my spot. As my life ran across my eyes and flashes like a kaleidoscope of memories. It was right before me. Drool dripping from the beast's large mouth. Teeth protruding to tear me. And I did not know what happened. But I brought up my phone in a matter of seconds and turned my flashlight on focusing it right on its eyes, and it could not see. It stumbled backward, letting out a large roar, and the wall beside me broke from the impact. I kept walking forward, and it kept growling, trying to get to me, the lights making it blind. It thrashed about knocking more rocks and breaking the walls that surrounded us. Water erupted from beneath where the creature stood, and for one last time, it gave me a glare before it pounced. I stood just in front of the feline emblem, and now my form pushed into it and the creature disappeared, right before it could tear me apart. I was breathless, and I soon blacked out from exhaustion, unable to process anything. When I woke up the next morning, I was in the bedroom I had booked for myself in the city. It was a bright morning outside, and Nicole sat on one of the chairs in my room, reading a book. The sunlight created a halo above her head, making her look like some kind of angel. Quite a bit of a hike you had yesterday, huh? She looked at my broken foot which was now placed in a cast. Wouldn't you like to know? I scoffed. I'd lost my camera, my backpack and everything else that was inside. I wouldn't be able to hike for a while. As for the rest of the story, I decided not to say anything to Nicole. Some ancient secrets are best left hidden.